Hey guys, in this tutorial, we take a look at some different preset particle effects. Anime Studio comes equipped with many preset particle effects that you can use right off the bat. This includes effects like rain, snow, explosions, and so on. The best part is they're very easy to put in, yet they're highly customizable. You can adjust the speed, the duration, how many particles are on the screen at once, and so on. So open up a project file or make a new document. And in order to access these particle effects, we'll need to go to Scripts, Particle Effects. And from here, we can choose from a few different effects. To start, let's choose the rain effect. What this will do is create a rain layer in our layers which we can use that to modify the particle effect. But also too, if you look over here, you'll notice that it puts down the particle effect on the stage. And in this case, it's a little offset for me because I've been using some different camera movements for this particular project. But like any layer, you can just move over the particle effects if you wish and put them where you want. So, for this particular particle effect, you can see that we have some rain automatically coming down. And in this case, the rain will continue to rain down um, forever, basically. So we can use this in many different ways. And if we render the scene out really quick, you'll see what the rain looks like when it's fully rendered out. Because in your preview window, it might look different as you were seeing before. So, what we can do is double click to go into this particle effect layer. And under the particles tab, we have many different options we can choose here. We can choose the particle count. We can choose the preview particles, which is basically what we're seeing on our um, work area here. We are we're only seeing 20 particles at a time. You can choose the lifetime of frames. You can choose the width, height, depth velocity, velocity spread, damping, and so on. So basically, if you want this to increase in speed, you would choose a higher velocity. You can choose the direction. If you want the rain to go sideways, you'll choose a 180 degree direction. If you want it to go straight down, you'll choose 270. You can adjust the spread, so they're spread out further. The acceleration also comes into play when it comes to speed as well. So those are all many things that you can play with. And a lot of this might require trial and error. So the good thing is you can always come back here and readjust however you see fit until you get the effect just right. Now, another thing you can do too is you can animate this like any layer. So if we started at frame one and we go to frame 24, we can drag this layer over this way. And as you'll see, it'll, it moves back and forth on my stage. So we could create different movements based on that. And you can see that the rain changes direction as we do that as well, depending on how we set up the particle effects in the layer properties. And we can also too adjust the width of this manually so that we can just have a small portion of how the rain um, is interacting. So we won't have that big area of rain, but rather we would have a very small portion of it coming down. And as you can see, it ha I have some spread out throughout the screen, but that's because in the beginning I had it wide and then I'm having it shrink. But you'll see that the droplets are very condensed in that one area where I have my layer situated currently. So those are some things I recommend you play around with. And again, there are many different particle effects to choose from. I'll just get rid of this one really quick and go back to scripts, particle effects, and snow is very similar to rain, as you'd probably guess. But again, as you can see, we have this very wide particle effect at the top of the screen. And if we render it out, you'll see that we have snow coming into play. I'll just hide that. And we also have particle effects 
like smoke, sparks, an explosion. You can choose some basic parameters here for the beginning of the explosion and click OK. And you can see it's playing out on the side of the screen here. But we can just nudge it over like this. And you can see there's an explosion going off and if we render that out, you'll see we have an explosion in it, and it looks pretty good. So again, these can save you some time when it comes to more advanced effects. And if you know a deal about scripting, you can also create your own particle effects scripts and import them into Anime Studio so you always have them available to you. And to that end, you can also download different particle effects scripts too. So that's something you might want to keep an eye out for as well. Anyway, that wraps up this lesson. Hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time.